Have you ever daydreamed about protecting your house and Christmas gifts home alone style from intruders? Well, whether you have or not, it's time to put your creativity, home defense, and trap building skills to the test. Hank and Marv are on their way over right now, so grab your knickknacks and gadgets and get ready to protect your home in ingenious ways. Number 10. Malicious Mailman While home alone in your parents' enormous mansion, you spot a couple of bumbling burglars sneaking into your yard. As a kid with a mean streak and an overactive imagination, you're more than ready when the burglars head to the front door. They're about to look through the letterbox, so which nearby items do you combine to show them who's boss? A. Your sister's pet tarantula and a four-foot-long stick. B, a three foot long hollow bamboo pole and frozen peas, or C, a leaf blower, elastic bands, an empty toilet roll, and your brother's fire ant collection. A tarantula might give the burglars a nasty fright, but on a relatively short stick like that, there's always a chance it might climb back up towards you. Plus, it's not guaranteed to attack the burglars. A bamboo pea shooter could certainly create some short-term pain if you blow the frozen veggies in the burglars' faces, but option C offers so much more. You can stuff the toilet roll full of the fire ants and attach the roll inside the leaf blower with the elastic bands. Then take aim, turn on the leaf blower, and deliver some serious pain. An eye full of fire ants isn't something the burglars will forget in a hurry. Number nine, emergency eye wash. With eyes full of fire ants, the burglars are desperately seeking some relief. Luckily for them, there's a faucet in the yard right next to the front door. Unluckily for them, this was all part of your plan. Which of these options have you prepared to make things worse? A. Filled the faucet with quick dry cement. B. Inserted and secured a straw filled with finely chopped dorset naga into the faucet. Or C. Covered the faucet handle in super glue. Quick dry cement in the eyes would be pretty nasty, but it's likely the cement's already hardened inside the tap. They won't get any water to ease the pain, and it's unlikely the tap will explode from the water pressure alone. A weaker pipe would be the first thing to go. The super glue would similarly have hardened mere minutes after being placed, so getting their hands stuck is unlikely. But the dorset naga is a type of super spicy chili pepper and your straw contraption will mean any water passing through will pick up seeds and spice from the chopped chilies. Splashed into already stinging eyes, the intense heat would be agony. You're a pretty mean kid, aren't you? Number eight, window dressing. The burglars decide to make their way in through a ground floor window, but you've rigged the window to function as a trap when it's lifted open. Which of these options have you chosen? A, this setup, using a fire extinguisher super glued to the floor and some string. B, this alternative glued down fire extinguisher setup. Or C, this setup using a baseball bat and some string. As painful as a baseball bat to the face is, in this setup, the baseball bat will only be lifted upwards and not outwards when the window is pulled up. The activation lever of this fire extinguisher with its string hitched to the ceiling would actually be loosened, not tightened, when the window is raised, meaning there'd be no effect. But the lever of the fire extinguisher that's tied straight to the window will be compressed when the window is open, and when this happens, a sub-zero spray of CO2, essentially dry ice, will greet the hasty intruder. Number seven, Grizzly Garage. With noses frozen solid, the intruders have opted for an alternative entrance through the garage. Which trap have you set up inside to be triggered when the manually operated garage door is pulled open? A, this trap involving a hairspray bottle glued to the floor, a boot, and some candles. B, this trap involving a sledge in your mom's exotic pet porcupine. Or C, this trap involving a gasoline container and candles. While a porcupine is capable of inflicting agony, it may flee rather than attacking, 
And besides, the pulley system would only pull the sledge upwards, not towards the intruders. The gasoline and candle strap could certainly be explosive and dangerous, but you're trying to protect your home, not burn it down. Besides, with the placement of the pulley system's pivot points, the can spilled contents might miss the candles anyway. The rigged boot, on the other hand, will be lowered when the door opens and its rubber sole should grip onto the top of the hairspray. As it's lowered, the pressure will trigger the can, spraying out a lengthy burst of highly flammable solvent through naked flames directly at the intruders. Number six, thoughtful gifts. After putting their flaming heads out, the burglars make it inside the garage, but not before you leave them a nice little Christmas present. It wasn't easy though, thanks to the highly aggressive, easily agitated wasps that have set up a nest in the corner of the room. What Christmas gift did you leave in a ribbon wrap box for your visitors to open? A, the wasp nest. B, a colorful collection of helium filled balloons or C, your two large pet camel spiders. With the aggression they've already shown, moving and wrapping the wasp nest is a no-go, unless you like being swarmed. The camel spiders, while certainly daunting with their disproportionately large jaws, aren't as dangerous as they seem, and may not even attack the burglars. The balloons, however, while appearing harmless, will drift up to the ceiling as soon as the box is open, directly into the wasp's nest. Wasps are highly sensitive to electromagnetic forces, and the static electricity of the balloons, plus the mere contact itself, would be certain to agitate them into attack mode. Number five, spiral stairs of despair. With faces swollen by the stinging swarm, the burglars continue their search for valuables down a spiral staircase into the basement. None of the basement lights work, meaning the only light coming in is from the dim light of the laundry room. Which of these traps will work most effectively as the burglars descend the stairs? A, dental floss secured from the bottom of the door frame with nails. B, your hoverboard placed on the stairs just like so. Or C, this alternative placement of your hoverboard. While a nearly invisible tripwire is a great idea, dental floss will snap as soon as any substantial force is applied to it, making it useless. The hoverboard on the first step will be clearly visible and avoidable in the light of the laundry room. But as you can see, the light stops after the first three steps. The others are hidden in shadow, making them the ideal place for a trip hazard on wheels. And away we go. Number four, playing it safe. Falling into the basement, the burglars stumble upon a safe, as well as a poorly hidden post-it note nearby with the safe combination on it. All put in place by you, of course. As they crack open the safe and pull open the door, which arrangement, utilizing a hot plate, a scorching grease-filled pan, and another object, will guarantee a spectacular trap? A, this arrangement of sticks and a water balloon filled with dry sand. B, this arrangement of sticks and a water balloon filled with water. Or C, this arrangement of sticks and a water balloon filled with water. The water balloon prompt above the pot of grease on its own will change position when the safe door is opened, so that's out. The sand-filled water balloon will drop into the pan when the door opens and the sticks are pulled loose, splashing the thieves with a bit of burning grease. But for ultimate diabolical home defense, choose option C. Once the balloon splits in the heat of the grease, the water inside will rapidly evaporate, causing a small explosion. Grease will be flung everywhere, causing agonizing chaos. Damn, kid, you really ought to speak to a therapist. Number three, bowling for burglars. Enraged by your traps, the burglars start looking for you. Lured by a tactically placed walkie-talkie, they start to make their way into the kitchen's walk-in pantry. Which tripwire arrangement have you prepared inside? A, this one, B, this one, or C, this one? Firstly, placing the tripwire at face level makes it too easy to see. Foot level is a better choice, but option A would bring the bowling ball down on the other side of the door, protecting the intruders. Option B, on the other hand, would bring that heavy ball right down upon the head of the first one in. That's gotta be a split. 
maybe even a strike. Number two, a great escape. Okay, now the home invaders are mad and they're coming for you. They're about to open the door to the closet you're hidden in. Which combination of items around you will help you escape? A, bottles of ammonia and bleach. B, a 200 milliwatt blue laser and disco ball. Or C, deodorant and lighters. Deodorant and lighters can often combine for a powerful mini flamethrower. But if you look closely, you'll have noticed this deodorant is of the roll-on variety and is consequently useless for anything more than a freshen up. Ammonia and bleach could certainly be mixed to create some toxic fumes, but if you mix these inside a closet, you'll likely gas yourself out before you can use it on the intruders. You should go for the laser. You've got yourself a 200 milliwatt one, which is powerful enough to cause permanent eye damage in one one hundredth of a second. You'll want to be precise with your aim so you don't blind yourself, so discard the disco ball and dazzle the burglars, buying you some time to escape. Number one, rope burn. Chasing after you, the burglars are led to the attic above the fourth floor of the house. Yeah, your house is pretty big. But when they discover you waiting up there with your Second Amendment loving grandpa's AR-15 in hand, they're forced to flee through the attic window down a conveniently placed rope. It runs 50 feet down to the ground. You've covered the top five feet of the old worn rope in layers of itchy fiberglass and coated the rest in gasoline. In their already injured states, the burglars can only descend one foot per second and they can't go back up once they're down. As a final lesson, you decide to burn the rope. The rope will burn at one foot per second and takes five seconds to light. Where do you burn it to maximize fall distance? A, stay in the attic and light the rope at the very top. B, take the 30 second trip to the ground floor and burn it from the bottom. Or C, take the 20 second trip to the second story window and burn 20 feet up the rope. The gasoline is dripped off here, meaning it takes 10 seconds instead of five to light. While burning the top of the rope might seem like a good idea, this section isn't coated in gasoline. It's coated in fiberglass, a well-known fire-resistant insulator. It could take minutes to catch a light, and by then the burglars would be gone. Descending at one foot per second, the burglars will take around 50 seconds to reach the ground. And the time it'd take you to get to the ground floor, they'd be 20 feet or 20 seconds from the ground. By the time you'd lit the rope, they'd be 15 feet away, and assuming you've stretched your arm as high as possible, lighting the rope seven feet from the ground, it's still going to take five seconds for the burning rope to meet them on their descent, and by then they'd be 10 feet from the ground. Sure, that'll hurt, but you can do better. Burning from the second story window means once you've made it down there, the burglars are 10 feet or 10 seconds above you. If the non-gasoline coated section of the rope can be lit in 10 seconds, it'll be on fire as they reach you. This means they'll fall 20 feet if they instinctively let go, or keep descending a very painful burning rope. After they limp off into the sunset, they definitely won't be coming back. Or will they? Did you make it to the end of this crazy Home Alone adventure? Which trap left you scratching your head? Let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching, you filthy animals.